Coming in at number five are the confessional statements of the communion of Reformed evangelical churches. The Communion of Reformed Evangelical Churches, or the CREC, is a great denomination. I was trained there, I was part of that denomination for a while, went to seminary there, got my master's at uh, New St. Andrews in Moscow. Really great people, really great project that they're doing there in Moscow. I'd probably still be part of that denomination if it wasn't for the divorce remarriage issue, but besides that, it's a good church. I appreciate the Reformed Catholicity of how they go about confession subscription. In order to be a member of the CREC, a church must subscribe to the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the definition of Chalcedon. Great. Uh, thumbs up. Two thumbs up. And one must also subscribe to one of the 10 Reformed confessions they have in this book. Most of them are from the Reformation era, but some of them are newer. They allow exceptions and amendments uh, to the confessions, and they acknowledge that the confessions are not exhaustive, nor are they the best articulation of various doctrines. This, I think, is just a great way to go about confessionalism, which isn't stifled or restrained by the circumstances of, of the historic context in which they were born. The church needs to be reformed and always reforming according to the word of God. And so sometimes that requires breadth in how you subscribe to confessions and, and things like this. And I would probably go further were I to make a book like this for a denomination, I would include the Lutheran confessions. Lutherans, it's been my experience, tend to not be as Catholic, I would say, in that their confessions are it's either their way or the highway, but I would be willing to be part of a, a formal denomination which has a union of Reformed and Lutheran churches, and they can share pulpits and they can share communion together. Furthermore, I would also permit churches to write their own confessions, write their own confessions and have them submit Committed to a higher courts of presbyters or bishops for approval. If they pass the threshold of orthodoxy, then uh, they could be accepted into the churches. So the 10 confessions in this book are as follows. The Westminster Confession of Faith, the 1647 version. The American Westminster Confession of Faith, the 1788 version. The three forms of unity, which are the Belgic Confession, the Heidelberg Catechism, the Canons of the Synod of Dort. And then you have the Belgic Confession, the Heidelberg Catechism, the London Baptist Confession of Faith, the Savoy Declaration, the Reformed Evangelical Confession, which is a modern selection of the 17th century Westminster Shorter Catechism, the Second Helvetic Confession, and the 39 Articles of Religion. Now, I, I personally agree agree or would acknowledge that all of these confessions are within the pale of orthodoxy. Orthodoxy is wide, and all of these confessions, I would say, fit within them, except for the Westminster Confession. I would say their permission of adulterous remarriages is outside of uh, the pale of orthodoxy, and so I would excise that from that confession. But if somebody wanted to subscribe to any other part of it, that would be fine. So I'd add the Book of Concord, the Lutheran Confessions. I'd remove the section of adulterous remarriage in the Westminster Confession, and I would remove the London Baptist Confession entirely. I would not want to be in formal union with Baptists, although it's not a complete fellowship issue. I just wouldn't want to build with them. And then there are other things in the confessions that I don't necessarily personally agree with, but I think it's fine if somebody holds to it, like the Pope being the Antichrist. That may be something that I don't hold to personally, but if someone wants to hold it, sure, fine. Probably one of the, the biggest differences, I believe the reformed articulations of the sacraments is fine, but I would probably personally hold to a more Lutheran view of the sacraments, and so I'd, I'd want to include kind of Lutheran confessions in there. The other thing is I'm okay with recognizing the two dominical sacraments and then the five lesser sacraments, which the 39 Articles seems to provide a little bit of wiggle room for, so shout out to the 39 Articles, the Anglican Confession, which is reformed. I'm also not a Sabbatarian, although I think it's fine if people want to be Sabbatarian, so that would be a difference that I would have with the Westminster Confession of Faith. It'd be far too laborious for me to go through all of the confessions and show their strengths and their weaknesses or my own personal agreements and disagreements, so I'm not going to do that. In general, these are good confessions, especially for those who are more Reformed and Evangelical in their outlook, though I suspect many in Reformed Evangelical Christians might be surprised to discover how Catholic some of these confessions are. For example, Heinrich Bullinger in chapter 21 of the Second Helvetic Confession writes, 
The faithful receive what is given by the ministers of the Lord, and they eat the bread of the Lord and drink of the Lord's cup. At the same time, by the work of Christ through the Holy Spirit, they also inwardly receive the flesh and blood of the Lord and are thereby nourished unto life eternal. For the flesh and blood of Christ is the true food and drink unto life eternal. And Christ himself, since he was given for us and is our Savior, is the principal thing in the supper, and we do not permit anything else to be substituted in his place. I particularly appreciated the second Helvetic confession and then I also appreciate the 39 articles of confession. I've recently seen Lutherans not mocking, but kind of saying their confessional, the book of Concord and all of these things are uh, superior to the 39 articles, which the book of Concord is huge. It's insane. Nobody is going to read it except the ministers of the Lutheran churches. And even that, I'm not sure that they all do. The 39 articles you can read very quickly. They are minimalist statements to try to catch the broadest amount of people. It was supposed to be a moderate position that both Lutherans and Reformed could possibly sign off on. And I, I think that that's great. I appreciate kind of the approach that the 39 articles make in kind of being more minimal in what they're saying so as to provide breathing room for difficult subjects. So this is a good compendium of confessions. Anyone interested in reading distillations of historical magisterial Reformed theology should check these out.